So stoichiometry is the study of the amounts of chemicals in chemical reactions. And it's such a funny word, I wanted to take a minute to go over where it came from. It was actually coined by the German chemist Jeremias Benjamin Richter, and it was first published in 1792, and the term has just stuck with chemist. It's derived from the Greek word for element, stoichion, and of course, metri for measurement. Stoichiometry is the calculation of amounts of chemicals involved in a chemical reaction. And those amounts can either be mass or moles, although mass is going to be the more practical unit for amounts, since we can actually measure it, mass on a chemical balance in the laboratory. So the amounts of chemicals really matter. So here's an example of where it matters. And this is a graphic of the stages of pharmaceutical manufacturing. So these manufacturers need to know exactly how much starting material they need for a particular amount of product. So here's some of the finished product, these pills. And here's a graphic of the, of the Pfizer manufacturing plant in England. And knowing how much of the starting material you need to give the finished product is a very, very important part of the manufacturing process. Chemical reactions occur in our everyday life. And here's an example. It may not happen in our everyday life, but here's an example of a forest fire. And we know that fire is, we call that, we call that combustion in chemistry, and it requires the reaction of something with oxygen very quickly with the production of heat, as well as other products such as carbon dioxide and water. One of the problems of these huge forest fires is sometimes people will not evacuate soon enough. And if the forest fire is too close to where they live, they often cannot escape in time because their combustion engine, which requires a certain amount of oxygen to start, will not start. These forest fires use a tremendous amount of oxygen and lower the oxygen levels in the atmosphere surrounding it. So sometimes people are unable to escape the forest fires because they cannot get their car to start. So that's another example of where the amounts of chemicals really matter. So let's look now at the steps we're going to need to solve a stoichiometry problem. Stoichiometry is about chemical amounts and we need a balanced chemical equation. You must have a balanced chemical equation. Many times the equation will already be balanced, but if it's not, you will have to make sure that it's balanced, and you always want to check to make sure it's balanced before you proceed with a stoichiometry problem. So here are our coefficients in bold, and this is also a combustion reaction. This is one, their stoichiometric coefficient is one, and in the past we've looked at this as one molecule and this chemical is known as ethylene, reacts with three molecules of oxygen to form two molecules of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water, as well as heat. These stoichiometric coefficients, we know, tell us the relationships of amounts between chemicals in a balanced chemical reaction. And oftentimes, we do not write the 1 as a stoichiometric coefficient, but I generally will, just for clarity, in this lecture. Now, although we first learned that these stoichiometric coefficients um, are assigned or, or refer to molecules or formula units, from this point on, we're going to look at these stoichiometric coefficients as moles rather than molecules, because it's a much more practical way to, to talk about these chemical reactions. We really cannot isolate one or two or three or even a million molecules, but we can isolate a mole of a molecule. So from now on, these stoichiometric coefficients are going to refer to moles. And we know that moles are numbers. And so we just want to remember that these chemical equations are like recipes, where I'll have one cup of flour, one egg, two teaspoons of baking powder, half a cup of milk, and this will make five pancakes. So likewise, these, co these coefficients give us the relationship between reactants and products and between each product and between each reactant. A key part of solving any stoichiometric problem is going to be determining the stoichiometric ratio we're going to use. So what is a stoichiometric ratio? Well, stoichiometric ratio 
is a ratio, which is the relationship between two chemicals, and it gives us the relationship between any two chemicals in a specific chemical reaction as, um, as symbolized by this chemical equation. So one mole of ethylene requires three moles of oxygen, and they will form two moles of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. And I can look at the relationship between any two chemicals. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to write all of the stoichiometric ratios for this balanced chemical equation. And let me just show you exactly what I mean by that. Here's a ratio in fraction format. That's how I want you to write your ratios, in this fraction format. And I have one of the chemicals in the chemical from the chemical equation in the numerator and one chemical in the denominator. And I also have the stoichiometric coefficient, as well as the mole, associated with that chemical based on the balanced chemical equation. So according to our balanced chemical equation, one mole of ethylene and two moles of water. Oops. So I would like you to write all of the possible mole ratios for these four chemicals in this balanced chemical equations, pause this lecture, and go ahead and write all of the possible mole ratios. And let me just tell you that having two moles of water in the numerator and one mole of, oh, this is the wrong chemical, and one mole of the ethylene in the denominator would be a different mole ratio. So all the possible mole ratios that you can do.